Welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. Today on the Yoder, we're going to smoke a Boston butt bone in for some beautiful, delicious pulled pork sandwiches. I know you'll like it. It's a really easy thing to do. Stick around. We're also going to do a temperature profile comparison between my Yoder smoker and a Traeger pellet grill. You don't want to miss it. Okay, real simple. We got ourselves a Boston shoulder pork butt. It's not actually on the butt of the pig. It's it's on the shoulder, but uh, they call it a shoulder butt roast. Pick this up at any of your grocery markets uh, for a reasonable price. Just make sure you unpackage it and pat it dry away from your sink so you don't spread any contamination. Oh yeah, that thing looks good. I'm not even going to bother trimming this up. I'm just going to pat it dry leave all that delicious fat on it. So as a schmear, I'm going to use yellow mustard. We use this on almost all our pork. It's really good stuff. And then your favorite rub. Don't want to actually rub your pork, just pat it like a bottom. Hey, pat it like a pork butt. Anyway, give it a nice coating, as much as you want. It really doesn't matter. It's what you like. And yeah, we should have a nice coating afterwards. Now, I kind of messed up. I ended up injecting after the, the dry rub because I was just tired and I wasn't thinking right. So here we are using the Cosmos. I mixed this up the night before to give a chance for everything, all the solids to settle out and the bubbles to go away. Then I used a meat injector. And you go around in a nice grid pattern, making yourself little cavities. Don't worry about it squirting out. Not a big deal. Any rub that comes off, just all you got to do is sprinkle more rub on. So I had the fire going, getting the uh, smoker up to temperature, and it's time to put it on. So it's really early in the morning, uh, at least for, well, no, it's not that early in the morning. It's about uh, almost 6 a.m. I've been cooking for only about a half hour. Took me a while to get the uh, smoker up to temperature. Um, as you can see, it's kind of dark. Got a little pecan. And um, got the firebox flew about three quarters of the way open. Got some good coals in there. And I wanted to show you something kind of interesting. So, the lower range, I'm seeing just shy of 300. And then up here by the smokestack, just shy of 250, about two, 230 or so. Um, quick piece of meat. Got the meat kind of like in the middle over to the left. I know it's hard to see. These uh, GoPros aren't very good at low light. But uh, on my meter thermometer, Yeah, it definitely uh, seems to have a uh, cooler zone to the left of the meat in the shadow of the firebox. Definitely cooler. Heat seems to be going up over the uh, top of the meat into the stack. You don't want your pork drying out, so we're going to make ourselves a nice delicious spritz here. A little bit of apple cider and obviously some beer. And vermouth, trust me, this is going to be delicious. You're going to love it. Some mods that I did on some previous videos, I tried making the smokestack a little bit more airtight, and I think it came out pretty good. There's no smoke leaking out of the stack. Okay. You can never overspritz as far as I'm concerned. Just make sure the bark's set up so you don't spray it off. About every 15 minutes or so, keeps it nice and juicy. Yeah, just keep on spraying. Again, use whatever you feel like. Okay, so I had a pretty good blue smoke most of the time. What you really gotta do is preheat those logs up. Make sure it's a very efficient combustion before you put that log on the fire. Okay, I think it's time to pull this baby off. 
wrap it, and put it in the oven. Now we're using two sheets of foil here. Just make sure nothing breaks open. We don't lose all in wonderful juice. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. Right into the oven. We're gonna set the oven for 275. All right, so I decided to uh, finish it off in the oven at 275 until I get to be about around uh, 205. You know, I've heard guys say 204, 203. You know, I believe in the fudge factor, so uh, I'm gonna round up to 205. Actually, I'm gonna wait until you can actually twist that bone and pull it out before I do it. Maybe a little bit more. So, at any rate, cheers. Okay, I hope you can see the meter app on the iPhone here. This is a summary of the cook in the Yoder smoker. Um, the green graph at the top is the ambient temperature that the meter probe that's in the meat records for the total duration of the time that I, I had that thing in the pork butt. The lower magenta line is the temperature curve up to my target temperature that I had set, which was just about 167. I was at a couple degrees um, for the heck of it. But, uh, oh, pretty sure, babe. Thanks, honey. Where'd you get that? My sweetie, my greenhorn. All right. If you want a shirt, uh, let me know and uh, maybe, maybe I'll see what I can do. Uh, at any rate, um, you can see the target temperature that I, I set it for 164, peak temperature 164. Um, total cook time was four hours and 33 minutes. So I started with the uh, smoker uh, probably about 4.30 in the morning and I um, started the initial fire to get that thing going. And um, I used post oak to get it started and then I eventually switched to pecan. I was using 15 inch logs that I got at barbecue headquarters in Simi Valley. Um, they actually gave me a bag uh, for free by the way uh, when I bought that smoker. At any rate, a lot of the little valleys and the dips and the temperature on the green line can be attributed to me opening the cooker and being nosy. And you know what they say, uh, if you're looking, you're not cooking. So um, some of the other valleys that you could see to the right of the graph after uh, two hours is from me um, opening the firebox and, and putting another log on the fire and uh, it would it would spike downward in the the, the ambient temperature until I uh, put that log in there again and I found preheating the log inside this the, the firebox ended up being the best way to get the wood ready um, and it was burning really clean most of the time um, there was once or twice mainly over here at about the hour mark where I, I didn't preheat the log and it really took a nose dive and I was trying to um, keep the door open to get a lot of that smoke uh, away from the meat. But later on in the cook, I was kind of improving in my process. Uh, again, this is the first time I've cooked any meat on this Yoder smoker. And I, I think I've uh, kind of figured out um, some of the tricks now in comparison, I'll show you a Traeger graph. This is when we cooked the tri-tip last week. And if you want to see that video, um, check out the, uh, the button up above. You can see how it was cyclic in the ambient temperature as the Traeger electronics were cycling through the, the auger and the heater and the fan and everything that has going. So it was, once it got up to its temperature it kind of hovered around there and you could see how the the, uh, the mechanism kind of uh, cycled and then the cook temperature of the meat a uh, nice linear progression that's what you want to see you want to see a nice even rise in the internal temperature of the meat 
if you see spikes there, you might have a problem. And um, as you can see here, um, this pork butt that we just did had a nice, fairly even rise in internal temperature. And um, even though that there was a lot of ambient temperature dips and spikes, more or less it kind of had an upward curve as well. And uh, I guess if you're really good at math, you can probably figure out an average. Still recording? Wee! Can you can you see my head? Can you look at it's cut off. The top of your head's cut off. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's still yeah, cut it's off. Still a little bit. Maybe can you do yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So uh, we got here a total of did I say eleven hours? So four thirty in the morning. So I got up we got up at four AM this morning. And uh, by the time the smoker was ready and the meat was ready to go on, we put this on the Yoder at 5.30 in the morning. Right. And now it's 3.30. So basically for about four hours and 43 minutes, it got smoke up until internal temperature of 165 degrees. Then we pulled it off and we wrapped it up in double foil, uh, super tight. We wanted to, to, to foil it to where there was no chance of any steam or anything getting out of there. So uh, uh, we put it in the oven at 275. Uh, there's no use in wasting fuel on just something you can do with the oven. So um, save your wood and don't spend that extra money and just go with your oven. How long did you let it rest? Until you got hungry. I'm unwrapping it here in the pan here. I want to save these juices. All right, there we go. So the bark still looks pretty good. There's a lot of juice here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour that juice out into the same pan. That's here. They say the bone, if it comes out, it's done. Look at that. Bone came right out. Wait, what's this? It's ready. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to slide this on out. We do have a, stu a live studio audience today, and uh, we're glad you guys can make it. <laughs> All right. Now, why are you putting it in the oven? To finish the cook. So we. Uh, so he doesn't waste all his wood. Yeah, so after about 140 degrees, 150 degrees, uh, a piece of meat just won't accept any more smoke after that point. Um, so, okay. the, so after that, if you're going to wrap it anyway, you're only using the wood as a heat source. Uh, the uh, bundles of wood that we bought are about 20 bucks for a bundle. So we have an electric <laughs> oven that work perfectly fine. So I could set exactly 275 really good. in the oven. So we finish it off there. Look at that. Look at this. Where are the gloves I bought you? Oh, there we go. Holy crap! Look at that. Don't don't shred shred. No, bro, that looks good. That my question is, is falling apart. That looks like money. That my friend is pulled pork. That is money. What'd you say, Bob? No, I mean it's falling apart. It looks delicious. I don't understand why it's got to go back in the oven. Just it doesn't. Have oh, to it's not. It's done. Oh, it's no, not. we're done. Oh, he just pulled it out of the we're oven. We're done. Oh. All right. Let me see. I gotta taste it. Take notes. All right. I really made this. He's trying to take all the credit. Okay. So the wife here. made it. Come here. on, you know what's up. Here's a piece that got perfect amount of smoke. Got good smoke ring. Got some uh, pieces that got the bark on it still. Okay. And uh, then we got the center section. We used uh, a, an injector injection. We use an injection from Cosmos, uh, meat injections. Uh, let me just see something. Huh? Mm, mm, uh, it tastes really good. All right, there we go. So now all, all we got left to do is, is uh, build some sandwiches. Okay. So any good uh, pulled pork sandwich is going to have a bit of 
coleslaw. What did you do to the pork? Put, uh, I put a little bit of barbecue sauce, just a little for flavor. It doesn't need to be drenched in it. Oh. Nice little mountain of pork. with my sandwich. I'm gonna look at this. A nice you serving. It's potato salad. Good. Yeah. Nice little serving of potato salad. And some of this beautiful salad that Michelle made. My girlfriend Michelle down the street, she is an author. Michelle. Stay tuned for Stay tuned for cooking with friends because she will be coming over to cook. Look how beautiful that is. Presentation is everything and this girl always has it on the mark. Look at that, gorgeous. And here you go folks. Bon Appetit from Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. Today we're pairing this delicious meal with a double of